Okay, interesting article today at Bloomberg.com about uh, YouTube and how difficult it is for the average Joe to make a decent wage. They basically look at the top 3% of YouTubers in terms of revenue. In order to get into, into the top three, you have to make over $1,400 a month, okay? And even at that level, $1,400 a month times 12 is only 16,000 and change in average annual income. And as most of you people probably know, if you're making 16,000, if you're living on $16,000 a year in America today, you're not doing too well. But that is the, the ground number to get into the, the bottom number to get into the top 3% of, of uh, earnings at YouTube. It's still barely above a poverty wage. So you know, you've got to make more than that. You've got to be in the top 1%. I was looking at Adam the Woo. Adam the Woo, Adam the Woo, you know, probably makes between three and four thousand dollars on his daily Woo channel with 1.7 million views a month. And maybe a little more than that or less than that, somewhere in that neighborhood on his second channel, the Adam the Woo channel. So Mr. Woo, David Adam Williams, is doing okay. And he's probably paying the bills for the Hollywood apartment and for large Marge and for the airfare and for the car rentals and whatever. But, and he is definitely, definitely in the top three. He may be in the top 2% of YouTubers. You know, he's got, what, about 165,000 subs on one channel and a little more than on the other. So he's doing very well. And his total views are well above a million. But they can say, a million a month, they can say, even on YouTube, if you got a million views a month, you're still probably not making a living wage. So, uh, it's interesting, the article. It also it points out the fact that advertisers on YouTube tend to go for the channels with um, a lot of views, obviously. So, only... What is it? The latest numbers show that 90% of the revenue spent on YouTube go to the top 3% of the channels. So the other 97% of the channels get 10% or less of revenue. Okay? That's how the money is divided. So advertisers clearly want to be on channels where people have well-established popular brands. You know, not on some flaky little channels like uh, Camo Dave. <laughs> I don't know. The, the article is full of stats. And it doesn't get into the whole issue of demonetization. There's a whole bunch of stuff now about, you know, one of the, one of the things that's mentioned in the article is how political websites, political channels on YouTube tend to be growing and are becoming more and more, you know, popular. But then how that, it, you know, if you're talking about Trump, if you're talking about gun control, if you're talking about school shootings, if you're talking about, you know, poverty, are you, you know, you're going to get demonetized by the YouTube bot. So even if your channel does well in the view category, how is it going to do in the advertiser category, in the revenue category? And they don't get into all that. It's a very it's superficial article, but it does touch on some interesting points. One of them being, it's going to be damn hard for most people to make any significant money on YouTube. Don't be fooled. Okay? And even Adam, even people like Adam, even people like Nomadic Fanatic, who are doing okay. I think both of those people, you look at Justin Scard, you look at Tim Tracker, people like that, not to even mention Casey Neistat or whatever, people like that are, are friendly bottom of YouTube people here that have made it at least up into the top three. It's still a slog, it's hard work, um, and, it, and to create that constant new form of content. The one thing I think that's part of the key to revenue at, at YouTube is the evergreen video. You look at what Adam does, you look to what a lot of other YouTubers do on the exploratory side of things, their videos don't go out of date, at least not for a while. So a lot of people today are watching videos that Adam did five, four, three years ago. You know, he, you, know you explore an abandoned this or a theme park or whatever. Those videos stay watchable for quite a while. And so Adam's videos, 
you know, the, the ones he has up there, they're still being watched a lot today. And if Adam even stopped completely doing videos, he would still be getting multiple thousands of dollars every month from YouTube. So I think it puts it all into perspective. So basically, for every, uh, <laughs> let's see, it's top 3%. So for every nomadic fanatic, Justin Scard and Adam the Woo there are, there are 97 more of you guys that ain't gonna ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> those are the for those three guys that hit the top three, the other 97 of us haven't cut it. Okay, so that doesn't mean you shouldn't do YouTube. That doesn't mean you sh you know. But just realize it's probably not going to be a job job for you, you know. And in fact, I personally like a lot of channels where the business aspect isn't there. You know, people are doing the explorations or they're doing the videos for their, for the love of doing them. And once they start to crank into that top 3% and they start making that money, congratulations. But I often find that their videos become less interesting. They're spending more and more time developing the business. So, you know, you can do your YouTube videos. You don't have to make $1,400 plus a month. But at the same time, you know, you can do some other stuff for your income. And, uh, you know, I don't know. It's an interesting article. I'll link to it below. Read it. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, some Somewhat superficial on some topics, but um, I thought it was, you know, at least points out how difficult it is for most of us to make a decent amount of money on YouTube. Bye.